Hi. A lot of people have been asking about the rules and we always intend to shoot another video of it and here you go today. So I'm going to introduce it a little bit and then uh, we've taken two random people off the street. Uh, Jeff and Sam, uh, both dungeon dwellers here and they're going to play a little bit of game and they're going to show you how some of the mechanics work. We're just going to stay focused for the, the beginning on the invasion box set. That includes your six tanks, your rough riders, your machine gunners, your infantry, and of course your three assault tripods. Um, so the rules, which are right here behind the future development notes, um, very simple, and they're in the softbound book, and everything you need to play the game is in there. Everything. Okay. The hardbound rule book is specifically uh, for the hardbound rule book is specifically for the hobby content more elaborate army list and all that kind of stuff. All right, so I'm gonna let Sam and Jeff take it away. Hey, I'm Sam and I'll be the human player today trying to defend against the Martian invaders. I've got my basic invasion starter set force, I've got some machine gunners, my tanks, my rough riders, and my infantry, and we're gonna do our best to destroy the Martian menace. Hi, I'm Jeff and I've been recruited to play the Martians today who will be attacking, trying to wipe off the scourge of humanity from the earth. I have my three assault tripods and yeah, I'll, I'll be using three assault tripods today. All right, so we've just rolled for initiative and I won, so it's gonna be the beginning of my turn. Now, one turn consists of three phases. There's a move phase, a shooting phase, and then a second movement phase. In order for this first movement phase, I'm gonna move all of my units according to their movement values. These tanks can move six inches, so I'm gonna move them all up six inches. Being careful to keep them within formation, all tanks have to stay within three inches of each other. Now I'm going to go ahead and move the rest of my units, and then we'll move on and show you how combat works. All right, here we are in the combat phase. And what I want to do is I want to fire with my tanks on this Martian tripod. In order to do that, each tank will get one single shot based on the cannons it's armed with, and this will be represented by a single D10. So initially, I'll roll three D10s, and my goal is to get equal to or greater than the Martian tripod's defense to ensure that I hit it. I've missed twice, but I've rolled one successful hit. Now I want to roll to see if I've penetrated the target's armor. So I will roll equal to or greater than the Martian's armor. Another success. The shell has penetrated the Martian's armor and proceeds to do damage. The way we determine damage is you roll on a chart. Larger Things like machines and tripods have a damage chart so that you know, after you've hit them and penetrated their armor, what the effects will be. Smaller things, like infantry and rough riders and smaller tanks, will simply be removed from the board. Now I'll roll on that damage chart and see what happens to the tripod. I've rolled a 3. Not as good as a 10, which would completely destroy it, but a 3 will reduce its armor by 1 point, allowing my subsequent units to have a better chance of penetrating the armor. My machine gunners will roll three D10s because they get three shots per stand. Now I'll move forward and hopefully get a better shot and take down that nasty tripod. Why this split move is so important gives the opportunity for the human forces in particular to take advantage of cover and to do some ambushes. In this case, the line of sight to these tanks from the tripod is actually blocked by this house. So in my split move, I can move my tanks out shoot, reverse, and now I'm protected by the house, depending on what happens in the Martian turn. The human turn is over, and now it's time for the Martians to act. The humans managed to inflict two penetrating hits on the tripod, but luckily all it did was reduce the tripod's armor by two. So now the tripod, hungry for revenge, has decided to fire on the tanks. A tripod is armed with a heat ray, which can be fired in two different manners a focused beam which has a higher power or a sweeping beam which can hit more than one thing I'm gonna try the sweep beam to try to hit all three of the tanks so I have to roll once to hit which I managed to do now the template will be placed from the first tank I hit extending out into the other two so now I've scored three hits total since I'm touching three of the tanks I've managed to get two penetrations on those tanks thanks to my powerful heat ray. So two of those tanks are now removed as casualties. Tanks, infantry, lesser things like that are removed if their armor value has been breached because they it speeds up gameplay and it allows you to see the horde of humans that are surging forward to try to take out these massive powerful 
uh, walking tripods that are coming for them. Okay, combat is over. Now we come to the next turn. At each turn, you roll for initiative. So it's not always the humans go, Martians go, humans go. It can be that Martians go twice, in essence, if it's at the end of a phase and you're rolling a new initiative. Everyone rolls a d10 each side, and there's a series of modifiers based on if you've taken out units on each side and other values that can really modify that um, particular initiative roll to determine who goes first. This time, Sam and I we each roll, and the Martians are going first. So now I have to think about where I'm going to move. My heat ray has a limitation of has to be at least three inches away before it can shoot at something. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my tripod at that last remaining tank that survived there, and I'm going to engage it in close combat. So the tripod has engaged the last remaining Mark I in close combat, and it will now attack with its reaper tentacles. Close combat's fought the same way. You roll to beat equal to or a greater than the defense of the defender, and then you have to try to again beat the armor value to see if you've caused a wound or destroyed the particular element. Ooh, here's some infantry in close assault with the tripod. So the tripod's actually charged in because these guys look like easy meat. But much to the Martian player's surprise, these guys have assault troops, which consist of three guys on a string. And their grappling hook launches up on, and they grasp. And when they come hidden in these units, what happens is they get to attack first, even though the Martian charged in. So they're now grappling. They're going up there with their dynamite charges. You roll the dice just like any normal assault. The tripod might be trying to resist with its reaper tentacles, so they fight it out. But if those guys win, they're going to place explosive charges on that tripod, and you're going to roll the damage out for that. Let's talk about Rough Riders for a minute. They're another special unit. Uh, their assault is really interesting because when they get into close assault, what they're actually trying to do is make die rolls, one per stand, um, to see if they can get a grappling line on that tripod, just like the assault infantry we just showed you. But the difference is um, they're riding around this thing in circles. So if they're successful and they get the score, every time they score one, you're going to put a marker down that says that tripod's been tangled in another cable. For every cable that that Martian tripod gets tangled on, it gets immobilized. And then subsequent turns for the Martian, the first thing he has to do is try to break away from those cables uh, before he gets to move. Immobile targets are in tough shape. Now what's interesting about tripods being tangled up in those cables like that is when they roll to break free, if they roll the wrong number, there's a chance that they're actually going to collapse. And when that happens, that can cause catastrophic damage. Well, there you have it. Um, we've done our best to try to show you as much stuff as we could. Um, I want to finish on one question. Where do you start? So how do you get into an all-new game at a reasonable price, and what do you collect? The invasion set is really the best place to start. You, you've got the rule book, so you've got all the rules that you need to play, including anything that you want to add on at a later date. The rules are there, okay? Uh, you get a nice set of infantry elements. You get those cool motorcycles that do a lot in the game, heavy machine guns, and three human tanks and three tripods. The tripods kits can be built and should be built um, by you into a black dust version, a green mist version, and of course the standard tripod. There are a variety of scenarios in the starter set. There's plenty of play value, so to speak, so to speak in these things. Um, you ought to be able to make all of that work for you. That's what you really should start with. This is a great starter set at a great value. There's plenty to do with this game. Um, later on, if you want to build up an add-on, that's great, because if you thought that the Mark IV was big, we still have to do this big giant beast here, uh, which is coming. This is the land ironclad. Lots of cool stuff going on with that. And we don't want to leave the Martians out. So once again, I'll show you the Overseer tripod, because the Overseer tripod is really neat. Thanks for your time. I'm sorry if we've annoyed you. We have a bad robot infestation here at Alien Dungeon. And uh, we'll try to get that sorted for you.